uh, yeah, thank you for uh, the honor of being here, especially based on just the people I know in this chat. Like, <laughs> uh, it, it is uh, very humbling to be among you all, and thank you. So let's get into it. Um, all right, how are we? We good? All right, thank you, Travis. Okay, so I'm absolutely way too excited about this topic. So I want to just jump right into it and uh, hopefully give you all uh, an understanding of the landscape of generative AI as far as imagery goes uh, right now, as of today. Uh, fun little story, uh, about five years ago, we were messing around with some of the early versions of this stuff. Um, and you would have to you know, basically get a really fancy GPU and run it overnight to generate anything that looked like uh, what you're seeing here, which are these Halloween masks. We actually trained it on 5,000 Halloween masks and then had it create new ones from scratch. So this was like the first taste that I ever had of, of like what having a computer generate an actual image. And it takes a lot of compute, which makes something like this seem impossible. But this is the state of image generation today. Um, this is created with a tool named Midjourney. And if you can see the prompt down at the bottom, that prompt, kind of like with ChatGPT, uh, it, is it all dials in, you know, what you're going to see and everything from reflections to, you know, composition, color, all the things that make, you know, something look aesthetically pleasing. Midjourney, in my opinion, is kind of like at the top of their game right now uh, in that landscape. And so you can choose from a, there are all types of tools y'all can play with. I mean, uh, I've got some QRs at the end of the, this that y'all can scan and just start jumping in and, and trying your own stuff. But like I said, Midjourney, uh, I feel is really high up at the top of the list. Dolly 2, which is OpenAI's image generator, does a decent job. Uh, it's got a free tier for that. Um, Adobe Firefly, they just released theirs out of beta, I think today or yesterday. So I actually had to add that to this slide um, just for the fact that if you've got Creative Cloud right now, just go on there uh, and search for it and it'll drop you into the, the web app version. And you can start playing with a really, and it, it, it's, I'd say it's somewhere between the journey and Dolly as far as quality goes. Uh, and then Dream Studio and uh, Diffusion V, which is a uh, free app you can download uh, and run uh, locally. So you don't have to worry about it going off to any remote servers and uh, you know storing your data with that. But all great options, um, all I would have never imagined were possible five years ago. Uh, this is an example of, you know, this is a scene from Mars, you know, with a million balloons and you can see the prompt in the bottom left, but the quality, just the overall artistic value, like, aesthetic of this is, it's to me is very well done. And so I thought that, you know, if we can bring things to life like this, you can switch out that prompt to be, you know, red balloons, uh, it could be underwater. I mean, the thing about these prompts is you've got these image generation tools that can literally give you the world of visual representation imagery. Like it can generate anything you want. The trick is dialing it in and you can spend hours going down rabbit holes, just fine tuning a prompt. Uh, so it's not a silver bullet is the thing you need to realize. Um, it is a craft of its own. Uh, and I think the tools that give you more variation to choose from uh, so that you can kind of dial yourself down into like kind of work your way through what it's giving you to get to something that you find valuable. Uh, those tools are the ones I think that uh, are going to elevate over the others. And Firefly, from what I could tell this morning, uh, does a pretty good job of that. And this is Firefly. I don't work for Adobe. I'm not promoting this. I'm just saying that this is something that you could go try um, today. And this is how it handled that exact same prompt, which, you know, it's visually interesting on its own, um, but just, you know, it, it's just a different way that you can visualize. And then this is the Diffusion B, which is the free one you can download. If you've got an M1 or M2 Mac, you can run this locally. Uh, the quality is not quite anywhere near what you get from those other two. But it's fun because you can learn how to kind of dial in your, your prompts and you can learn how to work with prompts locally uh, and you don't have to pay for anything and it's all secure and safe. Um, but it's a fun one to try out. Uh, we've been working with one of our clients, uh, TVA, uh, not the time travel uh, police from the Marvel thing, but Tennessee Valley Authority. And we were trying to just visualize what the future of the Tennessee Valley would look like with renewable energy like something future-based, 2050, uh, this is something that it came up with, uh, which to me I thought was fascinating. But what else is interesting about it is that 
when you go into mid journey and give it that same prompt, you can get all of these variations. And so all of these, like I said, you can spend hours just dialing in on a prompt. You can do variations of any of these. You can change one word in the prompt. It'll give you an entire different result set. You could do it at, uh, you know, the golden hour. You could do it, you know, on 4th of July. I mean, you just, you see where this goes, like, as far as like, you still need that human with a particular eye for what they're creatively trying to pull off to guide, guide these tools. And then this is me with my mind blown. You can probably see my brain dripping out of my ear. We went over to this, one of these, uh, virtual production studios, a 20 foot by 123 foot LED wall um, outside of Nashville that it's kind of what they film these the, like Mandalorian stuff on, but they pulled up one of those uh, upscaled images onto it. And it literally put me into the, the image that was created in about, literally it generated in about a, a minute. And then after upscaling and putting on this display, like I was literally in an environment that didn't exist 10 seconds ago. And so the, just from a, like, you could shoot a commercial on that. You could, you know, pull up anything that you wanted to like do an immersive uh, film set for. Um, and to me, I just, to see it on that scale was just absolutely mind blowing. Uh, oh, well, my girls did this this morning at, at breakfast. Uh, I just, I told them I would throw that in here. Uh, they like unicorns and dragons. So um, they did this in about a couple minutes just with typing in like a one sentence prompt. Um, this is something we've been trying uh, out at work for like blogs. Like if you've got, if you write up a, you know, a nice article, you know, you can get a quick visual to go with it that could be very, you know, specific to what you are trying to say in your blog article. And you can see that these illustrations came from that prompt at the very bottom. Um, and so same thing, like if you change out, you know, instead of an illustration or a drawing, you could change that to photorealistic. You could change that to any number, like painted by, you know, Rembrandt, whatever, like you can change it to match your aesthetics um, that you've got going on uh, anywhere else really easily. And then app mockups. <laughs> this is a mobile app. Like if you've all been to Dribble, you, know, you go there and it's just like eye candy. Well, you can create your own eye candy <laughs> just with these prompts and adding a little Dribble UX at the end of it. And then it's so fascinating to see the types of things it visualizes because it's like when I tell you mobile app for managing office space, you probably picture something or you could sketch out something that you know represents what your interpretation of that is. And to see like what an AI thinks these things mean I, is to me it's one of the most fun parts. And like the one well, the second one over especially how it's uh, 3D coming out of the phone. And I just thought that was so clever. Um, and so things like that can be surprising and. You know, this is the same thing, you know, we've been trying to create like a mood board for visualization of like a workspace from the future, um, you know, customization of, you know, spaces and space monitoring, um, you know, pulling in some organic, seeing what like radio waves look like, uh, you know, for mood boarding for, you know, to Travis's point, like to do like a quick first draft of something, you know, these things are great. Like you can go in within, you know, 20, 30 minutes, you can have a mood board of very specific imagery to what you're trying to solve you know, all the way down to like color palette um, and, and tone and feel like, and you can just put together a mood board uh, and have something to go with whatever you're trying to concept. Uh, product photography, this is just a prompt. I don't know what these whiskeys are. They, I told it, Tennessee whiskeys, they don't exist. These, none of this exists. Um, but from a product photography standpoint, you can imagine like how, you know, you can take your, you can actually have some of these you can take your product put it in there tell it what your product looked like and then put transport your product to any place so this particular bottle has been transported to the nashville bar or you switch out you know bottle of whiskey to christy cookie and it switches out the entire that's the only thing that changed in this prompt versus that last prompt was no this is christy cookie not whiskey and i also like that there is some type of a cookie dough drink in the middle that makes me my stomach upset looking at it but uh, but that's it you switch out one word one phrase and it gives you an entirely different type of a result you can even go into this is a uh, skybox so if you're doing any type of 3d content you can um, you know basically give it a prompt and within a minute you have a 360 degree skybox so you can imagine making virtual worlds uh vr uh, types of things like with just speaking a phrase and then you are literally hollow decked onto you know whatever it was you spoke this is obviously not a wild and crazy honky tonk bar because there's nobody in it but that gives you kind of an idea uh this was a wes anderson 
uh, <laughs> kind of like mock-ups somebody had put together. It's amazing. Okay, I won't make you watch that whole thing, but it's all like Star Wars and Wes Anderson style. So just changing it to a style of artist gives you a whole world of results. And you can change that to any artist. Bob Ross, you want Star Wars and Bob Ross? There you go. You just do it, Bob Ross. Uh, some of the other features that these things will do, outpainting. So you take like the Mona Lisa, you can see the original and then it just adds to it. Uh, you can take an image, like, like I mentioned, like the whiskey bottle thing. You can take your product and put it in and then have it create variations of it in different styles. And then even describe, like you can give it an image. <laughs> you didn't hear me say this from like Getty Images or some stock photography site. You can give it to Midjourney. It will describe what that photo looks like in words. You can then take that prompt, put it into any other image generator and get a very similar image, at least within, you know, the, the realm of what you were inspired by uh, on one of those services. Uh, we have been playing around internally with GPT-4 and DALI because the things that GPT-4, if you prompt it just the right way, it will give you some off the wall stuff to where you, things that you had not considered before. And then using uh, a tool to visualize stuff like that um, there's, you can go in and have it just come up with ideas for whatever. And then when you just, you, sometimes you just want to see how it will visualize something, these AIs. And, um, that's just like our, like, so bourbon powered time machine was an idea GPT-4 came up with. And then those visuals are from Dali. Uh, and then it gives a little creative brief. So that creative brief was written by GPT-4. Um, and it even tells you how novel it is based on what it knows about, you know, these types of things in, in the marketing industry. Uh, I'll leave you. I want to make sure there's time for other things, but uh, this is this is the stereotypical uh, Nashville scene because this is all the things I could pack into one Nashville uh, image, and this was a Mid Journey one as well. That was uh, your these are the tools I, I was telling you. Picture about. wasn't it, Matt? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. We took that uh, yesterday, um, and so these are just links to all those tools that you can just immediately go kind of get started with.